Hello everyone and welcome to My Fantasy Journey, a channel dedicated to opinion-based fantasy book reviews. Today I'm going to be talking about a book that has me so, 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 so excited. You guys have no idea. It's by one of my favorite authors, actually. If you have seen more of my videos, maybe you know who I'm talking about. Maybe you still have no idea who I'm talking about. But I have read quite a couple of books from this author, but I still have quite a couple of them to read left because she does have a lot of books. But it's funny because when I picked this book up, I said, I think this is going to be one of the books that I like the least from her. And it was actually the opposite. This, from what I've read now, of course, like I said, I still have a lot of her, of her books to read. But from, from what I've read now, this is actually my favorite book so far from her. It's absolutely, oh, I just loved it so much. It's so beautiful. So well written, like every, you know, like every of her books, of course. So well written, so beautiful, entrancing. I was absolutely spell spellbound by this book and I couldn't put it down. And, uh... It was just almost perfect. Like, it, it's an almost perfect book. And, oh my god, I'm just, like, I'm gonna stop because, like, uh, you know, drooling over it because if not, I'm not gonna, I'm never gonna finish this review. <laughs> but anyways, let's just dive right into it. So, the book that I'm going to be discussing today is Umbria in Shadow by the one and only Patricia A. McKillop, of course, the goddess of fantasy, <laughs> at least for me. Um... Oh my gosh, you guys, what a book, what a book. But anyways, of course, like always, the cover, I can't show you like this because my phone like glares into like the glossy screen. Of course, the, the cover like always is absolutely beautiful by Kanugo Craft. Like most of Patricia McKillip, uh, Patricia McKillip's books, the cover is absolutely beautiful and it portrays the story so, so well. So, um... Uh, it's too bad that I can't show you, like, in detail, but uh, if you saw it in real life, you would know. It's absolutely a gorgeous cover, and, it, you know, it captures the um, the essence of the of the story so well, so that's definitely a beautiful addition to your, to your bookshelf. I wish this camera would focus a little bit more on me <laughs> instead of, like, on my, on my bookshelf in the back. But anyways, so let's just dive right into... Um, what this book is about, I th I feel like I'm going to read what the book is about instead of telling you my own words because, you know, maybe you're thinking like, oh, you should say in your own words, it makes it more, you know, I don't know, more legit or whatever, but you know, uh, this book is so, it has so many things, and I just feel like if I would say it on my own words, I would give you like a worse summary than, you know, and maybe it'll draw you away, so I'd rather just read the official kind of summary here and give you like a better kind of like, you know, um, small summary of the book that I would do personally. So I feel it's better that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it. <laughs> so it says here, Umbria, it is a city that echoes with the footfalls of Sapphire Hill shoes that holds its breath as a straw haired apparition glides through its streets that sees its dreams and nightmares take shape in the drawings of a bastard heir. It is an enchanted time and place envisioned by world fantasy award winner Patricia A. McKillip, acclaimed author of The Tower at Stonywood. When Umbria's prince, Royce Grey, breathes his last in palace rooms high above the city, he leaves his young son at the mercy of his ancient great-aunt, Domino Pearl, a woman who has plotted her rise to power in Umbria for far too many years to allow a little boy to stand in her way. Already she has thrown Grieve's pretty mistress out into the streets, where no one would, accept, would expect her to live an hour. The boy will take her a little longer. Meanwhile, in a dreamlike underworld peopled by Umbria's ghosts, a sorceress weaves her spells and brews her potions, never revealing her real face or true heart. As, and somewhere in between, the struggle to rule the whole of Umbria, both its light and shadows, will rest in the hands of those whose fractured lives align like the lost pieces of a magical puzzle. Doesn't that sound interesting? It is. <laughs> so... Like I said, I absolutely love this book, but anyways, let's just dive right into the review. So, <laughs> I'm gonna start saying uh, the things that I didn't like first. So, it, it was just a little thing, um, but the thing is that, okay, so, those of you who have read Patricia A. McKillop before, you know that there are some books of hers that are just so complex and so confusing because there, there's so much, you know... There's so much allegories, there's so much symbolism, metaphors, and, um, and, you know, they're so enigmatic sometimes that it just gets, 
it just gets really confusing and blurry and kind of dreamlike and you just like have no idea what's going on and even though you know it's beautifully written and of course Patricia Mc uh, McKillip weaves amazing stories and her language you know her mastery of English is absolutely stunning but you know I'm pretty sure that that if you've read books like The Tower of Stony Wood or The, the Book of Atrix Wolf or something like you know or other of her more complex books you will agree with me that there are some books from hers that are very kind of hard to get into um and there are also other books that are not that are more much more straightforward um and but you know even her straightforward books i would say are complex and have a lot of like uh complex elements and a lot of symbolism as well but this this for me was one of her more accessible books at least in my opinion you know, along with uh, the Belt Sealy Head, uh, the the other one of my other favorite books from her is uh, In the Forest of Seer. That one was kind of in between, um, but yeah, but this one um, I would say that's one of the most accessible one. But something that I didn't like was that towards the end of the book, it got really, it got like more confusing and enigm enigmatic and just like strange and I just didn't know what was going on so the ending itself for me wasn't that satisfactory it left me uncertain it left me like hanging like dangling in a little thread and I just didn't know how to feel about it because for me I felt like it left things unclear a lot of things unclear and unresolved like I didn't know what happened to this character why it happened like what happened to this you know to the city um what happened in general, like, to these characters, and how did it happen, you know, how did I get here to, like, what the ending is telling me, and why, you know, so that was, like, the, guys, that was, like, the only drawback of this book, if it wasn't because of that, it, I would say that it was, it's kind of, like, almost, I don't know if there's such a thing as a perfect book, but it would be, like, almost, you know, like, kind of like almost what perfection would look like it, it still is but you know but the ending was like the only flaw for me like the at least a big flaw for me that that stood up for me that was like the only thing you know because i just felt confused at the end and i don't really know what happened and it just left me you know it wasn't that satisfactory but it wasn't upsetting either it wasn't an ending that made me upset and just made me go like oh i don't i i didn't like the book the ending ruined it for me no it wasn't like that at all it just I don't know, it just left me very uncertain and very confused. That was, like, the only thing. So, that was the only thing I didn't like, guys. So, yeah, the, just that little thing. But anyways, uh, let's just get to the things that I did like, which are a lot, actually. <laughs> so, one of my favorite things about this book was the setting. Oh, my gosh, you guys. What a beautiful, beautiful setting. It's one of those that you just want to jump right in and, like, see for yourself. Even though there are dark things going on in this book and it would be dangerous to do so. But still, it's so haunting and so beautiful. You know, so rich and detailed like any of Patricia McKillop's books, I guess. But it's so rich, detailed, so substantial. It's just gorgeous and entrancing. And, and, and I think that's what mostly got my attention of this book i just wanted to keep reading more and exploring more of this amazing setting that she created you know this this amazing world and um that you know the city that she created i was just absolutely spellbound you know and everything that how the way she described it everything was so clear so so she painted this beautiful you know picture in your mind you know uh, such a colorful uh, colorful canvas she, you know, she's a master of words and language, I feel, Patricia McKillop, because she paints, you know, like, the scenery in your mind so well. And, uh, you know, even though this is different, because I usually, you know, read more about uh, nature, you know, of course, I'm used to castles and stuff like that as well. But, you know, this was something very different for me, a very different setting, you know, with the city and, you know, this really big, powerful city um and this huge palace and stuff like that it's dif different but it was a breath of fresh air and actually something that i secretly without knowing actually wanted in a book something that i actually was looking for and i got it in this book and that just made me so happy so the setting was definitely one of my favorite things it was so interesting and so rich and beautiful detailed and mysterious and 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 atmospheric and it just had me absolutely in trance so that's one of the things that i liked uh, the best of this book um something else that i that i loved like i mentioned is that it's extremely atmospheric 
um, like a lot of her books also, but you know, for me, atmosphere, it's one of the most important things in a book. If a book is not atmospheric, and if I cannot imagine things well, I will just get frustrated and put it down and get irritated, and yeah, so for me, like, you know, atmosphere is very important, and this book has a lot of it, and I absolutely love that, um, and you know, it almost, I would say it has like a gothic feel to it, even, which is very interesting. You know, every time I finish reading a chapter of this book or put it down or something, it made me want to listen. The, the thing is that I, um, like my favorite genres of music are goth gothic metal and doom metal and stuff like that. So every time I finish reading this book, um, if you guys are into that type of music, I don't know, maybe you guys haven't, you probably don't know what the heck I'm talking about. But every time I, I read this book, it made me want to listen to Theater Tragedy to their album Velvet Darkness They Fear, which that kind of music that they make in that album is very gloomy and atmospheric and it just makes you feel like you're in this gloomy dark castle with candles and like, you know, this uh, like this dark hallways and, and you know, and dark chandeliers and, and stuff like that. And that that's the kind of feeling that this book gave me. Um, and it made me want to listen to that band and other gothic doom bands like Draconian and Trees of Eternity, you know, that their music is gloomy and atmospheric and just, like, very haunting as well. So, for me, it was really cool being able to connect that type of music with this book. It was definitely a plus and, you know, something that I wasn't expecting either. So, I think that was really cool. So, yeah, huge atmosphere, very gloomy, very but very haunting. It's a very haunting, at least for me, it's a very haunting book. You know, and like I said, I felt like I had like a gothic feel to it, and I loved, I loved that. Um, something else that I like was the characters were very strange and fascinating. They all, of course, they had like their their personal struggles, but they were all connected in a way. Um, you know, it was like this web, you know, and they were like all connected, like their destiny was kind of connected in a way, and they were like meant to like solve this puzzle in a way, you know, all together. And, you know, of course, there were all different people, of course, with different personalities and different um, problems and stuff like that. But they all held, you know, like, you know, like the similar, like, emotions, you know. And this book has carries, like, many of her books carries a lot of emotion also, um, you know, with, uh, with, of course, love, despair, and... Uh, you know, evil also, a jealousy, um, betrayal, even madness, um, selfishness, and all those things are portrayed really well, um, the, the emotion, and that's something that, that I loved as well, but this kind of happens with every Patricia McKillop book, and I love that, that, you know, she portrays emotions so well, and so, you know, very, in a very complex way, it's not just like, oh, the character feels sad, it feels happy, feels... You know, it's a, it's a very complex, deep feeling that she portrays in her books. And in this book as well, you know, something that's deeper than, you know, it's not superficial at all. It's, you know, emotions that that are deep and real and, and you know, and and raw and, and very human and, you know, and just like very, you know, there's a lot to them. So I, I like that as well. And like I said, the characters, I love that they're all kind of strange, but they're all fascinating characters in a way. And I love how, you know, like, she, she creates this puzzle, and in the end, she, like... Like I said, even though the ending was a little bit confusing, but, you know, how she related all these uh, characters... Well, but, you know, of course, like I said, she, she does this in her books, in all of her books, but, yeah. But I love that. The characters are very interesting, and, yeah, a uh, very, very cool characters, um, and very different from anything that I've read. Um... Something else that I loved was that it is very mysterious. So, you know, it's there's a lot of mystery in this book and it just makes you want to... It's definitely a page turn. It just makes you want to see what happens next. And, you know, so th this book has a lot of air of mystery. You know, what's going to happen in the palace and, you know, and stuff like that. Like, what what's going on with this character? What's going to happen next? So that's really cool and it definitely keeps you, like stuck to the book more and makes it even more interesting so that's really cool um like i said this book has a very it has like a dark atmosphere and there are even some parts that are, are almost scary-ish they weren't scary but they were very dark and uh 
Yeah, I'm very gloomy, and it just made you go like, ooh, that's kind of creepy, you know, kind of like eerie and stuff like that. So there were some, some, you know, some parts in the book that felt like that, which I loved also, which gave it even more charm to the book and more originality. So I really like that, that there's like some parts that are very actually kind of creepy and, and very eerie and, and strange. And I thought that was very cool and very haunting and, and very interesting, actually. Something that I, that I had seen a little bit on, on some of her books, but she brought it more to the front here. And I thought that was really original and really cool. Um, of course, something that I, this is obvious, it's gorgeously written, of course, it's Patricia and McKillop, of course, it's going to be well written, so that's no surprise, um, and like I said, something else that I like, that despite the end, that was confusing and, and strange and left me hanging, it was one of her least confusing or exhausting books to read, because there are some books that I, even though I like them, or, like, aspects of them, for me, they were absolutely draining. For example, um, The Tower at Stony Wood, which I have a review of um, in this channel. For me, it drained me so much, and I was just, like, uh, exhausted in the end. This book didn't tire me at all, and, you know, it was still it still felt pretty long. I mean, it's not that long. It's, um, how many pages? Am I holding this upside down? I am. Oh, my goodness. Um, hold on. I put the cover upside down. Uh, it has through 298 pages, so almost 300, um, almost 300 pages, but it, I, I never felt exhausted while reading it. It actually just made me want to read more and more and more, and that's very, I think that's definitely a, a good thing, um, because like I said, there, there have been some books from her that just make me feel tired in the end, even though they're beautiful, and they're like this emotional roller coaster and whatnot. They just make me feel exhausted. And I'm just like, oh my god. Like, I'm so tired <laughs> when I finished reading them. But this one didn't make me feel tired at all, actually. I, I wish it would have been a little longer. Um, so that's definitely a good thing that I liked. You know, that even though the ending was a little bit confusing, it was more, one of her more, you know, um, less confusing, so to say, or exhausting books. So that I like that a lot. Um... And yeah, and you know, part of that has to do because it was so interesting and beautiful that it just didn't didn't feel exhausting for me, because it just kept me, it just pulled me in dip, you know, deeply to the setting and the plot and everything that I just wanted more, you know, and everything was so beautiful and mysterious, and I just wanted to keep exploring, like, you know, those secret hallways and secret mansions and stuff like that. That was really, really cool, and yeah, that's why it didn't feel for me like exhausting, and I just wanted to keep exploring more, so yeah, um, something else that I love, like I said, is that it's so descriptive, so visual, it's such a colorful, like, tapestry, you know, that she created here, and I think, like I said, that's very important, so just, like, as beautiful as this, as this cover is, I feel like this is, like, perfect, because the, the book itself is so, um, descriptive, everything, you know, it's so detailed, it's so incredible to to think about how she created this world, you know, with so much detail and stuff like that, and and everything, you know, so spot on and and so vivid, absolutely incredible. So that's something that I love. Something else that I like, like I mentioned before, is that this book it is it, it did at least for me it felt dark, but it's not oppressive, and that's something that I appreciate because I've read dark books, for example, like, um, Heart's Blood by Julia uh, Marillier, which I reviewed recently, um, for me, that book was dark, but it was also very oppressive, and I just, and that itself made me exhausted, and I, in the end, I was just like, like, please make it end, you know, let it finish, I want to finish this book already, and it just consumed me, and not in a good way, you know, because it was dark, but for me, it was just tiring. It was just exhausting. So this book, even though it was dark, it didn't feel oppressive to me. It actually felt fascinating and haunting and, and interesting and beautiful. So that's something that I really like. Um, that, you know, even though it's dark, it doesn't feel like it drains your soul. Um, I already mentioned this, the beautiful emotions, you know, the way they were portrayed, of course you know, um, with grief, with sorrow, with horror also, with terror, and, you know, being uncertain, um, and all those things, you know, innocence also, and, 
and even like things that you just don't understand things that are you know like enigmas and and stuff like that and um all those things are so well portrayed as well uh you know another world even and um yeah and like the heart and all those complex emotions and stuff that if I keep just like describing and I will just take here forever but you know like the emo emotions were beautifully portrayed but this of course it's Patricia and McKellip, so I feel like she does that in at least in every book that I've read she she does that beautifully so yeah um and something else that I loved was that I never felt trapped in this book even though it takes place on the city of Umbria and like the castle and the undercity and whatever, or palace, I'm sorry, and the uh, undercity and the underworld um, of Umbria, um, it was so vast and there were like so many secrets and so many things going on and, you know, and things you didn't expect that I never felt trapped. You know, it, it wasn't just that it took place in one city, but that city had so much, so many, it had so much to it, so many, like I said, so many uh things that you weren't expecting so many secrets so many uh like alleys and so many streets and shops and and you know and the, then then comes the underworld with its secret mansions and um the the palace with its secret rooms and hallways and uh, and all those things so it was such an adventure she i love how she was able to create a huge adventure you know, and compass and like in a place specifically, you know, not having to travel so far, you know, to other lands and stuff like that, but still a book that, that there's just so much exploring and it's so fascinating to like discover those, those ancient, you know, places and stuff like that, that are secret and, you know, full of things that are old and, and, you know, from the past, and see, like, the past of Umbria, and stuff like that, it was absolutely fascinating, you guys, and I love that, I love that I didn't feel trapped, and that I had so much fun exploring this mysterious, you know, city of Umbria, with this mix mysterious uh, palace, and, like, underworld, and everything, and that, the secrets that it has to hold, I think that was absolutely brilliantly done, and I, and I absolutely loved it, um, and, I think this is the last thing I'm going to say, because if I keep, like, you know, talking about this book, I'm going to make an hour-long uh, review, but I loved that it felt classy and elegant. For me, it was, it's kind of like a classy and elegant book. Um, the way everything was described, it felt, of course, the, Umbria was a, a very powerful city, you know, and um, actually, sometimes they describe it as a, the most powerful city in the world, so... Of course, I guess that's, you know, that's the reason why. But it, it felt like a very classy and elegant book. The way everything was described and everything. The tapestries and the dresses and the shoes. The carriages, you know, the the paintings, the hallways, the ballrooms. Everything, you know, like the, um, the secret rooms and uh, the, like the, the secret mansions and stuff like that. Everything, it just felt really classy and very very everything was like elegant even though some things were so old because they, they were so you know deep into Umbra's past that they were actually crumbling down but it's still she managed to make it beautiful and mysterious and eerie and elegant even though they were maybe falling apart or something like that so for me that was really really cool dwelling into the past and the present of Umbria and seeing you know what the city had to offer and and you know everything that it, you know, that it had, like, like I said, the palace and, and, the uh, undercity, you know, the way, like, the architecture, the, the way everything was, uh, you know, according to this city and this world, the way, you know, the style was from the architecture, and, uh, you know, and all those things for me were, was super interesting and very, very entrancing and, and haunting and, and just beautiful, 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 so, I love that, I love that, I absolutely love that, so, I think that's all, because if I keep mentioning things that I like, I feel like I'm never <laughs> never going to end this review, so I think I've said most of it, um, but I, like I said, I, oh my gosh, you guys, I cannot stop seeing how much I loved it, um, but anyways, who would I recommend this to? If you, of course, if you're into Patricia and McKillip, and you haven't read this book, you have to, you have to read it, they just, like, put down everything that you're reading right now, and just, like, Grab a copy of Umbra and Shadow and start reading it. 
It's absolutely entrancing and beautiful. Um, who else would I recommend it to? If you're into different kind of fantasy, you know, this is not like an epic adventure, kind of like, you know, with a lot of, like, action, you know, swords and whatever, and like, those kind of high fantasy books. This is more of a dark haunting, you know, haunting, I'm sorry, like a dark haunting, kind of uh, very atmospheric, um fantasy book uh that also you know has to deal a lot with of course with um with the power of a city you know and uh what's going on at court and at you know at the castle and it's funny because i usually don't l really love that much those kind of like you know things but this she she managed to do it in such an amazing way um so if you like those kind of books you know that have like this haunting like I, I don't know if I should, I don't know if, if I want to say medieval or renaissance or whatever, but you know, but this haunting kind of dark atmosphere and it's, um, very beautiful, very descriptive, very luscious and just very rich. And, you know, you're more into mystery, also like a mysterious fantasy, like I said, that has to do with, you know, with the things that are going on at court, like betrayal, like struggle of power, um, abuse of power, um, and all those things, uh, you know, and love and, uh, and royalty in a way and stuff like that, then you will love this one. This is a very different and very original fantasy. So if you're looking for something that's, you know, that's like that, if you have an open mind, then I would definitely suggest this one. Who would I not recommend it to if you're more into, like, high fantasy, very, like, with vast worlds and, you know, like a huge map and, and, you know, um... And a lot of, like, adventure and more stuff that has to do with, you know, with magical lands and, you know, pretty much like Lord of the Rings or, you know, or other high fantasy books. Like, I mean, if you want to read something like that, then just read The Riddle Master of Head, you know, The Riddle Master Trilogy um, by Patricia McKillop because that is pretty much what it is. But if you're looking, you know, if you don't like more, like, um, books that have to do a lot with, like I said, with royalty and like a uh, mystery and uh and if you don't like this type of setting either and you know uh and you don't like books that have to do you know that ha talks a lot about betrayal and uh and power and stuff like that then maybe then i wouldn't suggest this book but who knows because like i said i thought this was the book that i was gonna like the least and i like this is the book that for now i like the best so it really depends um I re if you like fantasy, I would recommend this book in general. Um, or even if you do, actually. If you like also, like, kind of, like, historical aspects and stuff like that, then maybe even so you would like this one. But I would just recommend... I would actually recommend this book, you know, if you love fantasy and stuff like that, then I would absolutely recommend it. Give it a try, you know, if you're open-minded. Um, it's, it's very interesting, and it's a very, very, very beautiful and just spellbinding book, so... I would actually recommend it to to anyone who's open-minded, and especially if you like fantasy and kind of like mystery and stuff like that. So I don't know who would I specifically not recommend or recommend it to, but I would suggest that if you're open-minded and if you love Patricia McKillop and the th if you find the things that I said interesting, then give it a try. So yeah, I'm going to stop yapping <laughs> about that because if not, it's already 30 minutes. But anyways... Yeah, Umbra and Shadow. What would I give this book? I would give it a 5 out of 5. If it wasn't for that uncertain ending. That was like the only thing that... That's the only thing that holds me from giving it a 5 out of 5. So I'm going to give it a 4.8 out of 5 stars. Which is almost perfect. And it's still, you know, even though for it wasn't 5, it's going to... It's definitely one of my favorite... I think it's going to become one of my favorite books of all time so yeah so i will give it a, a four point uh did i say 4.5 no i'm sorry 4.8 i don't even know what i'm talking about 4.8 out of 5 not 4.5 4.8 <laughs> no like i said the only drawback was the ending so yeah f that was like the only thing that i didn't love you know that just let me confuse so 4.8 out of 5 is um uh, my rating, which, like I said, even though it's not 5 out of 5, it's still, it's still, this became one of my favorite books, uh, um, of all time, so, yeah, 4.8 out of 5, 
for Ombre and Shadow by Patricia A. McKillip. Woo! Loved it, loved it, loved it. Anyways, that was a long review, so tell me guys, do you love Patricia McKillip as much as I do? I know that there's some of you who um, I've um, seen videos of or I have talked to that, that love uh, or have read Patricia McKillip, so tell me how much you love her, what's your favorite book from Patricia A. McKillip for now, have you read Ombre and Shadow that you love it as much as I did? Are you planning to read it? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? You know, about the ending? Did you have the same feel as I did? All those things. Let's talk all about Ombre and Shadow and Patricia McKillip of how awesome she is. And uh, yeah, so I hope that you guys enjoyed this review. Um, and if you want to join me on this journey, you're uh you know you're welcome to to subscribe to my channel i'm going to be posting more cool book reviews um i want some really awesome fantasy books so please feel free to join me on this journey and like i said let's let's discuss you know uh, this author and this book and things related in the comment section below so i hope to see you guys there and yeah thank you guys so much for watching i shall see you in my next book review read on bye